Marin, we have been trying to keep this secret for a long time, um, but we have something for you and for our audience, for everyone here tonight. It's natural to a festival like this that it will grow and evolve and that uh, Marin and all of us, the audience even, will, will slowly change and, um, and grow. And at the same time, um, when we learned that she wasn't coming back, it was a, it was a hit, it was an impact. And then at some point, I think it, it evolved within all of us that we had to do something. I mean, the way we honor Marin when we're here, the same as always, is to show up ready. Ready to be open to the music, to the composers, to the audience, to the work that goes into doing what we do here. That's one of the things that makes this magical, is that everyone comes in with that kind of energy. We had to find a way to thank her. One day, I was uh, just <laughs> I was in the shower, actually. And, you know, I, I was thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if we were able to really give her the, the kind of gift, the ultimate gift, give her the gift of music? I mean, the, what, what can you do? Play for her. But what? We had kind of a, you know, a chat room, so to speak, uh, online where we, we started getting more and more people from the orchestra involved, getting a lot of ideas about how was best to do this. Kevin's been a part of the festival as a performer and as a composer and as a teacher and as a friend to so many of us. So he was someone that we all discussed as being a perfect, you know, person, if he could possibly do it, to write a piece where we had an empty podium, we had a complete surprise, where we were able to give her a gift, show her, this is your orchestra, this is what you created. It's a small piece, I called it Last August, um, because this is Marin's Last August, um, and um, it's just a sort of an orchestral hug, I think, let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, when the orchestra came to me about writing it, it was something that, in spite of a, a pretty busy time for me uh, creatively, I, you know, I couldn't say no. Uh, it was just such a touching idea. And um, when I started writing it, when I sat down at the piano, it was it was easy because the emotions uh, are there for me, and um, certainly I know with the orchestra and what everybody uh, here at Cabrillo is feeling. So it came pretty quickly. Um, and I hope the piece embodies um, a lot of the emotions that everyone's feeling. You know, I think there's, there's some sadness in the piece, there's some nostalgia um, and some, some reflection and also triumph, I think, um, at what Marin's done here. I had to use everybody in the orchestra. So here's a kind of tender lyrical piece, but I had to still use three percussionists, timpani, piano, harp, everybody, tuba, you know. So uh, everybody's involved, everybody gets to say something, and I think that's important. The other challenge was that the orchestra wanted to play with an empty podium without a conductor. And I thought that was a very beautiful idea. It reminds me of the way the New York Philharmonic often plays the overture to Candide without Leonard Bernstein, their beloved uh, music director there on the podium. So, but it's a challenge to write a piece that can be done without a conductor. It's been a secret, yeah, from the very beginning. And so I haven't told anybody um, except my copyist uh, publisher who had to do the work on it. Um, it comes from the entire orchestra, they commissioned it, and um, it's really the only time I've ever had to keep a piece a complete secret. Um, and, um, you know, I hope, I, hope she, I hope she likes it. As you listen to us tonight, I, I hope that this can take the place of any of the other words that we might try to find for this. We love you and thank you.